Sharks are misunderstood and reviled by many people. They have a reputation for killing humans, and as they are not cute or cuddly, not many people particularly like them. However, their reputation for killing humans is greatly exaggerated. Worldwide, each year, there are 10 deaths attributed to shark attacks, compared to 150 deaths caused by falling coconuts. An estimated 2,000 people die from being struck by lightning, and there are a staggering 236,000 drowning deaths worldwide per year. In fact, sharks have more to fear from us. It is estimated that over 100 million sharks are killed by humans every year. There is a very long and sad list on Wikipedia of shark species that are threatened with extinction. This means that they are on the IUCN list as vulnerable, endangered or critically endangered. Critically endangered sharks include the oceanic white tip shark and the scalloped hammerhead shark. But does this matter? Of what use are these great beasts anyway? Well, they matter a great deal. Many sharks are apex predators and do a great job at controlling the population of many species by eliminating the weak, old, slower and sick animals. This helps prevent outbreaks and the spread of disease whilst also strengthening the gene pool. They also stop populations of marine life from becoming too big, preventing them from causing harm to the ecosystem. Scientists in Hawaii found that tiger sharks helped protect the health of seagrass. When tiger sharks were present, the turtles grazed a wider area, and not just in a single region, which destroyed the seagrass. Sharks isolate a comparatively large amount of carbon in their bodies. When they die naturally, and their bodies are eaten by scavengers, this carbon is recycled. But if they are hunted and removed from the ocean, this disrupts the ocean's carbon cycle. Sharks are also very important economically. In the last few decades, some people have become fascinated by them, and ecotourism businesses have sprung up in various places around the world, such as the Bahamas, South Africa, Australia, and the Galapagos Islands. In Australia, Shark diving tourism contributes 17.7 million US dollars annually to the national economy and in the Bahamas a single reef shark is worth $250,000 to the diving industry but only $50 if caught by a fisherman. There are 31 species of oceanic sharks which are found in tropical and temperate waters and many migrate. From 1970 to 2018 their abundance has declined by 71.1% at a steady rate averaging 18.2% per decade. For all 31 oceanic shark species, the risk of extinction indicated by the ICUN Red List category has substantially increased since 1980. Tropical sharks have declined more steeply at 87.8% than temperate species at 40.9%. It was the largest species which declined first followed by medium-sized species and eventually relatively small species. And not surprisingly, those species that are long-lived and late maturing initially declined the fastest. The main threat to oceanic sharks is overfishing. Over the last 50 years, there has been more than a two-fold increase in fishing with long lines and seine nets, fishing techniques which are known to catch the most oceanic sharks. Some sharks, such as the poor beagle, are caught for its meat but many are caught just for their fins. I discussed shark finning in a video last year for Shark Week, so if you want to know more about this barbaric practice, then please have a look at this video. In some areas, fisheries management strategies have been implemented, but it has not been soon enough or robust enough to protect shark populations, and relatively few countries have imposed catch limits. It is possible to save our sharks if science-based management is implemented throughout the species range. This has been the case for the white shark, whose population had declined by 70% over the past 50 years, but which are now recovering in several regions. And hammerhead shark populations, which are also on the increase in the northwest Atlantic. Another way in which humans are responsible for decimating shark populations is due to sharks being caught as bycatch on tuna longlines and insane nets. Exactly how many are caught and die in this way is difficult to say due to under or lack of reporting. This is due to many countries only requiring the reporting of fish species which are landed, so as bycatch is often discarded, it is not recorded. This lack of data makes it difficult to manage bycatch 
and to identify geographical problem areas and so provide targeted solutions. But it is not just fishing practices that impact on shark populations. Shark nets used to protect swimmers from shark attacks also have a negative impact. In the late 1950s, shark nets were placed along much of the KwaZulu natal coastline in response to attacks on swimmers by sharks which occurred over a few days. Today, there are 37 beaches equipped with bather safety gear, which mostly consists of nets, which are 214 metres long and 6 metres deep, and are secured at each end by two 35 kilogram anchors. The nets are situated 400 metres offshore, in depths of 10 to 14 metres, in two parallel rows, but they float 4 metres or more below the surface and don't connect the shoreline so sharks can still swim over, under or around them. The nets have a large mesh size, which is designed to stop the shark from escaping until eventually it dies. Between 1978 and 2008, about 33,684 large sharks were caught in these nets, with only 12.5% being released alive. The nets are indiscriminate. They capture all species of shark, from great whites to black tips, and also other marine life, such as turtles and dolphins. Since 2004, the nets have caught on average 237 rays, 58 turtles, 53 dolphins, and five whales each and every year. Before 2004, the figures were even higher, but due to public pressure, measures were taken to reduce the catches of marine mammals and sea turtles. Between 1999 and 2004, there was a reduction in the number of nets, so that by December 2003, the total length was 28 kilometres, a reduction of 40%. And nets were removed ahead of the sardine run, which occurs in June and July every year, which used to catch huge numbers of dolphins and sharks that follow the shoals. An alternative to nets are drum lines that consist of a floating drum with two lines attached to it. One is for an anchor on the seafloor, while the other has a large hook on it. This hook is baited so as to attract a shark that is in its immediate vicinity. The number of so-called dangerous sharks caught by drum lines is similar to those caught in nets, but for other sharks some are more likely to get caught, such as dusky sharks, and some are lower, such as black tips. However, there are concerns that they could attract more sharks inshore and that smaller sharks thrashing on the hooks will attract larger sharks into the area. In New South Wales, Australia, a different type of drumline called a SMART drumline is in use. SMART stands for Shark Management Alert in Real Time. These drumlines consist of an anchor, two buoys and a satellite-linked GPS communications unit attached to a baited hook. A triggering magnet is attached to the communications unit and the line. When an animal takes the bait and puts pressure on the line, the magnet is released. This alerts people to the presence of a shark or other marine animal on the line. There is a vessel on standby within 30 minutes of the drum line and it goes to the captured shark, tags it, relocates it and releases it. The Australian Marine Conservation Society is opposed to the use of smart drum lines as some species of shark can't cope with being released after being caught. However, the trial in New South Wales was so successful that this year more smart drum lines were being rolled out. The New South Wales Shark Programme for this year also includes drone surveillance at 34 key swimming areas and 21 listening stations along the coast. These listening stations have receivers that record any tagged shark that is swimming within a 500 metre radius of the station, thus alerting people to the presence of the shark. Unfortunately, nets are still to be found at 51 beaches between Newcastle and Whirlingong. Helicopters also fly along this part of the coast and alert beach authorities and beachgoers if they see a shark. Information from drones, helicopters and listening stations is shared to the public via Twitter and the Shark Smart app. I think it is great that we are using all this modern technology to help prevent the deaths of these amazing creatures. But it is not always needed. In Cape Town, they are able to have shark spotters up on the mountain who use polarised sunglasses and binoculars to watch for sharks. If they see one in the water, they radio down to someone on the beach who calls people out of the water. 
I really hope that something can be put in place to save these fascinating creatures before some of their species become extinct. Bycatch needs to be assessed and mitigated, along with the reduction of fishing for sharks for shark fin soup. Personally, I also think that we should remove all the shark nets and drum lines that so-called protect swimmers. I know that's easy for me to say, as I don't swim in these waters, but with the use of the technologies we have, it should be possible to keep swimmers safe without the negative impact that shark nets have on sharks and other marine life. And after all, it is us humans who are venturing into their environment, not the sharks into ours. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.